SmartSuite has just brought AI to the automations engine. So in this video, I will explain you how to set it up and show you not one, not two, but four awesome use cases for this new AI action. So be sure you watch till the very end. Hi, my name is Artem. I'm a product manager at SmartSuite. You ready? Let's go. Here's what the new AI custom prompt action allows you to do. From SmartSuite, you can connect to a selected AI provider and compose a prompt using data from trigger and or preceding actions. The response that you get from AI can then be used in the following actions. We'll spend a moment configuring the step and then jump straight to use cases. Under the actions menu, look for the platform AI and select custom prompt action. And the first thing you need to do is pick a provider. SmartSpeed supports all the leading names in the space. The sub-menu shows you a list of models for a selected provider. And each model gives you a hint about its primary use case, price, and whether or not it can scan and understand images and PDFs. Once you've picked a model, you need to provide your API key and name this connection. And naming connections is very handy when you need to use different API keys for different purposes. I've already linked my OpenAI, Anthropic, and Gemini keys, so we are ready to roll. In this first example, I have a table with products for my bookstore. Each product has several basic attributes like title, author, publisher, price, and a very brief annotation. And my goal here is to generate a SEO-optimized product description that I can use on my website. I want this workflow to run when I click a button, so this is going to be my trigger. Next, I will ask AI to generate that SEO-optimized description, and I'm using my connection to OpenAI. The prompt that I composed combines my exact instructions as static text and dynamic values that I'm pulling from the trigger. I'm feeding it with the product's title, author, annotation, etc. We'll set the output to simple for now. And in the succeeding update action, I will grab the output from AI and use it as an input for the description value. Let's give it a test run. Here we go. And this seems to be quite a decent book description. What if I needed that description to be generated in several different languages, say English, Spanish, and Italian? This brings us to use case number two, and the automation we have just created needs to be modified just slightly. In the prompt, I will ask AI to generate three translations instead of one. That's obvious. The key change needs to happen in the output section, where I will select custom instead of simple. And now I can instruct AI about the structure of the response that I expect to receive. I need three separate descriptions, one for each language, so I will compose an output as three independent values. And note that each value can have additional instructions. They are optional, but very often they help AI understand better what needs to go there, so I will fill them in. Now we have to change the update record action. And you can see that those three descriptions are now available as an output of the custom prompt action. So all I have to do is map them to my fields in the table. Let's do the test run. And here we are. All descriptions were generated as we expected. This was a warm up. Let's get to more serious stuff. Suppose I have a centralized ticketing system where my employees submit their requests and every request will have a title, description, a service area, and priority. Then next to it I have a table with the members of the support team. Each support person is associated with several areas. For example, Jacob deals with IT and sales related tickets. Every engineer also has a competence level and a counter that shows how many open tickets this person currently has. With the help of AI, I want to build a workflow that will automatically assign a support engineer to a ticket. But before making this assignment, I wanted to analyze the current workload for every support engineer and also make a match between engineer's competence level and ticket's priority. I will keep the trigger very simple. It starts when a new ticket comes in. In the next step, 
I will search for support engineers that are associated with the service area from the trigger. And now that I have this list, I can feed it to the AI. And this is very important. The custom prompt action can accept list of records. In this case, it will be the output from the multiple find action. And I'm sending the names of the relevant support engineers, their competence level, and that counter of the open tickets. And the task will be to pick someone who has less than three open tickets and a matching competence level. And I will also ask it to explain its decision. So you may want to pause this video for a second and read the entire prompt. We will use the custom output here again. And all we need is two simple text fields. The first one will retrieve the name of the support engineer that AI picks. And the second field will contain the explanation of why this choice was made. Then the update record action will simply grab the support engineer returned by AI and assign it to the triggering ticket. Okay, let's create a new ticket. There's a connection failure again. We'll give it a second to process. And here's the newly assigned support engineer. And we can also see a very detailed explanation of why this person was selected. And trust me, it did a good job. And we are not done yet. In this last use case for today, I will ask AI to read my mailbox. And if it thinks that an incoming email contains a purchase order as an attachment, it will parse it and the automation will create an order, create order items and link everything together. Here's a PDF file we're going to use in this example. As a trigger, I will use when a Gmail is received and I will add a condition to watch out for the attachments count. In the custom prompt action, I have to pick a model that is capable to scan PDFs. In the instructions as a first step, it needs to scan the file and decide if it is a purchase order or not. And if it thinks it is, it needs to find a customer name and grab information about the purchased product. And now I need to build the right output structure. I will ask it to return customer name and purchase order number as standalone values. But we need to define the structure to capture the list of purchased items. So it needs to be a list of objects where every object represents a line item. So I will add a node for the list first. Then I will add a node for an object and now I can add all the fields that I expect to receive inside that object. And again, know that I'm adding additional instructions for every field separately. The succeeding actions will have to digest the output from the custom prompt and we'll create the purchase order record first. Of course, we want to link it to a customer that hopefully AI action will return. Next, we need to run a loop against the list of objects. Where do we get that list from? It's a part of the AI output that contained a list of PO lines. So inside the loop, we'll create other items using product name, line number, quantity, and price, all provided by that AI output. And of course, each order item needs to be linked to the purchase order that we had just created in the previous step. We are all set, so let's send that email now. Here's our purchase order, and it's linked to a correct customer. Here are the lines, and all values are in place. And we can also check that the PO total in SmartSpeed matches to the PO total in PDF. And finally, let's check the run history. It will show you the response from the AI, so you could troubleshoot and adjust your prompt if needed. It also shows you the amount of consumed tokens to help you better understand the consumption. This concludes the introduction to AI action in SmartSuite automations. I really hope those four use cases I've shown will help you get started with adding AI to your workflows. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.